for the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. That's found in Proverbs 1.32. Complacency is defined as a feeling of contentment or self-satisfaction, especially when coupled with an unawareness of danger, trouble, or controversy. Jesus began, Complacency is the enemy of spiritual growth and can cause your soul to become lifeless. My people have become slothful and indifferent in their efforts to serve me and witness to others. Where is your passion and zeal, dear ones, to give testimony to my mercy and graces? I look at what your heart treasures and what fuels your lives and I find apathy and self-satisfaction, instead of being on fire for me and the work I have planned for you. Your preoccupation with the world is disheartening as your minds are so taken up with what you will eat next, what you will wear to an evening out, and shopping for items that will avail you nothing when scarcity sets into your land. Precious Ones, I desire you to be passionate in heart and be fervent in spirit as you are about my work. Whether in prayer for others or out in the mission field, do not be slothful as you serve me. My love is not ordinary or mundane. Neither should yours be for your God or in service. You often acknowledge that you love me but yet some of you take our relationship for granted. You read scripture and sing songs over and over, yet the words you find routine and do not sink down into your souls, and their profound meaning dims in your hearts. Guard against self-satisfaction, as it can lead to the feeling that you have life handled and that you only need God when trouble comes. You feel complacent because you attend church every Sunday, sing in the choir, tithe 10% of your earnings, and attend a local charity event once in a while. But I tell you, you can do these things and still feel empty because your faith life and relationship with me is lacking. You are not living your lives for me or with me. You are living for yourselves. As the Lord is giving me his invaluable words and this message to share with all of you, I'm sitting here typing, thinking about skinny pop, popcorn, which is delicious, by the way, instead of staying alert so I don't miss any of what Jesus is imparting to us. And to make matters worse, I get up and pour myself a bowl and start munching on the popcorn and have the nerve to be surprised when the Lord stopped speaking to me. So I waited, repented for my folly, until relief swept over me when Jesus continued. I forgive you, Elizabeth. Please do not do that again, as you very well know how my heart feels when your mind is distracted and not focused on me. I'm sorry, Lord. Thank you for redirecting my thoughts. Remind my flock of the story of Eutychus and what Paul said to those gathered there for his teaching. Found in the book of Acts 20, verses 7 through 12. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up, dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. 
Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. What a tragedy! How shocked the people in the room must have been! However, Paul rushed down to where Eutychus was and uttered these words of life and encouragement, saying that there was still life in him. Paul had passion as he taught the others about their Creator. He did not tire or grow weary due to the lateness of the hour and lack of rest. Paul was on fire sharing his testimony, the gospel, and the love of Jesus with fervor and zeal. A tendency to complacency and distraction is human nature. It happens to us all. The story of Eutychus ends in hope and revival that there is still life in us. We are encircled by love, and we never fall so deep that God's love is not deeper still. The Lord sees our human frailties and works within it as His grace is penetrated. Instead of beating ourselves up for getting complacent, distracted, and prideful, we can repent and view these opportunities to choose to let God take control to give it all to Him again and again by showing up to worship with an open heart, expecting to fill up on the Lord. He knows what we need, and if we come to Him with openness and a willingness to give of ourselves, He will provide us with much more than we expected, and His loving graces will penetrate our hearts and set our souls on fire. Amen.